container gardening and I'm really excited to share today's uh, container garden recipes because I really want to share my most favorite recipe for the year and you're basically looking at them and there's a few to get through so let's keep it moving because the sun is coming up this morning and if that sun comes up it's really hard to be able to see the beautiful colors of these plants within these combos. In these containers we have the blood banana tree. I started these from really small little shoots uh, that I purchased online. I really love them. I've had them in the past in containers but we went a whole year last year without them and I couldn't go without them any longer. Just look at the beautiful coloring on those leaves. And then on the other side they're a really beautiful warm color. Almost like a like a maroon but really really pretty. And we just got a huge heavy storm a few days ago, so that's kind of what happens to the leaves, but they still last and look pretty. And then we also have more shoots coming out of the bottom, and all you really have to do is, once the season's over, or even during the season, if you don't have a mix with other varieties, is you just take a little saw or serrated edge knife and just cut them off of the main mama, and then you have all kinds of other banana trees. Look at how cute that is. This is my favorite combination this year. I know that this may not be everybody's cup of tea of a combo because it is a lot of darker colors, but it just looks very moody. It looks very dramatic and I just, I, I really love it. So in here we have the Alteranthera and this is the Purple Knight. So this is the more aggressive, vigorous grower and I love it. It looks cool, especially as we come into this time of year because if you can see it just kind of swoops out of the container in many different areas and if you don't want it to spread as much you can always trim and cut it back we always pinch it so that way it gets full all pinching is is say this is getting too long for you and you want it to get bushy because you want this to all fill in all you do is come in here and take the tip right off it stops it from growing out for a little bit and allows all of these little growths here in here to start filling in. I've been teaching that technique for years and people have told me that they just they love it and it works so well for them. And then in here we have the variegated wandering Jew. I love the variegated one especially amongst this combination. It really contrasts beautifully because it carries the same color in here as uh, the purple night. And then we once again have those Sun Caladiums from Proven Winter. I'll pop the name below. This is actually one of my favorite ones because they have this beautiful, almost waxy looking leaf. It's really, really pretty. I love it. And now it's starting to get even bigger. Look at these gorgeous, huge leaves on there. And then we have just some self-seeded little snapdragons over here. And we've got the trailing black petunia. Kind of just adds that perfect little touch. This container is perfect for the change of the season. It's super cute, kind of has a little touch of orange, but also a little bit of that spookiness going on with it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like it. Fall is like my favorite time of year. And off the back here, we have the Proven Accents Patricia. This is a nice little ivy. It can take sun to shade. And I really like it. It's really pretty. Nice little texture in there. And then I have some basil in here. Just for that extra little accent. I love when the basils kind of just start, you know, getting their little top tassels there. And it just adds in like that same color running through it like the alternate there. It's kind of running with that entire, the entire theme of it. I'm sure you can see now why I love this combination in this container. It's just really unique. And how in this one I have the Wandering Jew. Well, I only grabbed one this year. So in this one then, we put the Secrecia. And this one's the purple variegated one. You can see there's some variegation right in there. And it does, uh, you're seeing that little purple flower there. That's some Terenia. That's the Catalina Pink Terenia by Proven Winter. You can see it's kind of running throughout. And then some purple ruffles basil in the back over here. And a lot of my snapdragons are just all saved seeds from the years before. 
So this one has uh, more pink than the orange, even though I'm pretty sure I made a uh, even mixture amongst the two containers, but it's possible that the pink just came into blossom sooner than the orange in this one. And these ones will most likely be the orange color. And I love how this one has a really deep rose snapdragon in it. It just really makes these dark colors pop. It kind of really adds to the color of that caladium. There's something about that color of snap with this combination that's really beautiful. Now you have seen my most favorite container garden recipe of the season. I just love it. It just looks so cool. We are moving on to our corner container over here that lines the driveway for the entrance of the garden. So we do like a larger pathway here because then we can drive through and it makes it easy to use our ranger for cleanups and plantings and all kinds of new projects. You can see all of my black eyed Susans kind of coming into blossom around this entire container which looks really pretty. But I really love this petunia over here. This one's called Veranda Double Sugar Plum. I just love the color and I love how they're little double flowers. They really add to the entire combination here. And here's that new Sun Begonia by Proven Winner. It's that Double Delight Apple Blossom. I showed you this in part one. Completely impressed with its performance. Really stunning. And then over on this side and corner, uh, I have the Color Blaze Mini Me Watermelon. This is also a Proven Winter Coleus. You notice too, it's starting to get a little, a little shoot here with some little flowers. So a little touch of that bluish purple color is really actually striking. That's the first time I've seen it in blossom over here. So that's, that's very impressive looking. I love that because it actually really ties in the petunia over here. Over here is the Supertunia Persimmon, Proven Winner. I really like this Supertunia. Uh, the only thing is that it did kind of go wrong in this container because it did get aphids. Uh, we had a lot of trouble with bugs this year. Aphids have been crazy this year. I've never seen it go all over Supertunias like it did this year, but I really didn't do anything to manage it this year. I was kind of like, I'm just going to see where things go and see how long it lasts, even with aphids. And it's heavily infested. I'll show you up close. Like this is what it starts looking like when it has aphids. It gets a little bit of like this brown in here. These aren't watering mistakes. These are mistakes of, uh, you know, insects. So, you know, sometimes when you're wondering, you know, I don't know why my flowers got, you know, to look like this. I've been watering well. I'm not overwatering. I'm not underwatering. I'm fertilizing it. Um, a lot of times it's usually an insect problem then. And that's what it is with this, but you can't really tell because it's still really beautiful. So I've just left it in there and if it gets any worse, I'll just end up pulling it and pretty soon it's going to be mum season anyway. And these little rosy red snapdragons over here are self-seeded. So they kind of just fell over. They're a really tall variety. And when they fell over, I snipped off the flowers, which allowed all of the growths along the stem to grow up all in this middle section. I kind of discussed that in one of our previous videos uh, when we just kind of uh, removed those flowers and it fell. Um, I talked about how these flowers would then fill in and give it like a really awesome look and it sure did. It's looking, it's looking amazing there. And then in the center we have a caladium. The caladiums are just now starting to really perform. I think that they really needed that hot heat that we've been getting lately and that really ensures its growth. And it's really starting to flourish because this was just literally nothing before. So it's really coming out and looking beautiful and this is the same caladium as in the last container. And let's talk about this beautiful height in the background there. That's a canna. It's part of the Tucan series. Really pretty. Has another shoot coming up here. A new flower about to blossom and open up for us. This is our window box on the side of the garage. And this is somewhere where I always just do more foliage things. So that way it's not as much maintenance of cleaning petunias and even though you see some kind of trailing down on the bottom there. So the petunias trailing down on the bottom there are uh, the petunias that I seed started on my own. They were those saved seeds I discussed in part one of the wave petunias. So they're 
habit has kind of changed. The color obviously has, but that's okay because like I said, it's, it was fun and it was affordable. So over here we have the Altaranthera. Um, this one is purple print, so it's not as vigorous, but obviously it's still vigorous and beautiful. Um, I'm forgetting the name of this one. I think it was something brandy. I'll put the name right at the bottom of that coleus. I also then in there have some blue Victoria Salvia peeking out just to add that little touch of blue along with the trusty rusty coleus right in here. That's actually one of my favorites. I just love how vigorous large and colorful it is especially coming into fall in the center there there is the french quarters that looked a lot more beautiful a week ago uh, we had a lot of strong winds come in here and it just kind of whipped everything around and that's the one that kind of got hit by those winds but it's still pretty as you can see the tall grasses in there those are millet that is uh the dark purple millet and that one is also seed started and we sell those on our uh, Manor House Market store in the spring around uh, end of March, April and May. We sell little, little plants to get your containers and your gardens going. And then on the end, we have Trusty Rusty again, along with uh, the coleus I'll put at the bottom. Um, and then another little blue Victoria Salvia there. So it's a nice little even looking container there. This is one of my favorite window boxes, just because I always love all the coleus and foliages. It's the most simple thing to upkeep. All that it ever really takes to upkeep the coleus is a little bit of pinching that allows it to bush out and kind of stack and build upon each other. So that way they're just not, you know, long stems coming up and then they wave in the wind. That's what happened with the French Quarter Coleus. I couldn't reach the top so they were starting to just get long stems and I knew better. I could have gone inside, opened up that window and fixed that problem earlier but I just never did and that's what happens. That's the result of not pinching and having it in an area where it can get wind destroyed. In part one, we shared these containers over here. Can't show you that wall. <laughs> um, so if you missed part one and you wanna see what's in these guys, feel free to pop on over to that video. All right, we're moving on to our next container here. So in the back, we have the Colocasia Coffee Cups by PW. They actually have water sitting in them. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite foliage plants is this Persian Shield. I just love how the leaves are shaped, the colors of the leaves, it adds a really pretty texture. Trailing off the front is the Sweet Caroline Medusa. It's a potato vine from PW. And I just love the, the leaf shape and the growth habit. The shape of it and the form of it is just really beautiful and shapely. It's not super aggressive either, which I really like. It's It obviously is huge, don't get me wrong, but it's not super aggressive to where it takes everything else in the container over. This gorgeous purple super tunia is the Hoopla Vivid Orchid. This beautiful super tunia here is the Hoopla Vivid Orchid. And then we have the Super Bina Cherry Burst. And this bright and colorful lantana over here is the luscious basket tangelo. I also like the berry blend which was shared in our other video on part one. And I just threw in a couple eucalyptus for fun because we grow hundreds of these a year. <laughs> and I have a little croton hiding over here called Petra. It's not vigorous enough to keep up with everything but it's holding its own. Looking cute. <laughs> A lot of these things can be dug up and at the end of the season and cut off of the root structure here of this container and be brought into the house or in the greenhouse. Here's another one of those sun begonias but in yellow. It's called Selenia Yellow by PW. And then in this container it also has, just like some of the other ones, the Color Blaze Mini Me Watermelon. I just love the vibrant color of it. It's just one of those things where it's like why not throw it in because it just adds so much color without the maintenance it's it's really beautiful 
There is one container we didn't cover in part one over here that I would really like to share because it has some really unique varieties. I know a couple you've already seen, such as the Hoopla Petunia Supertunia here and the Medusa Sweet Caroline Potato Vine. The Colocasia on this one is called Heart of the Jungle. I love them. Look at how huge that leaf is. It's so pretty and it's popping up just right outside of this really beautiful wisteria. A lot of people think that this is a tree growing here, but it's not. We just put this beautiful birch log, right, um, attached it to our little homemade trellis, and the wisteria kind of just grew around it, and so it made it look like this beautiful tree here. And then with that heart of the jungle colocasia popping out of there, it just really gives like this whole jungly feel over here. And once again, we do have the Lantana Luscious Basket Tangelo in there. But one of the main reasons why I really wanted to share this container uh, was also to show you some of the sun begonias in here as well, which are absolutely stunning. And I think that this is probably my favorite color right next to the apple blossom color. And this one's Selenia Apricot. These ones are the PW Full Sun Begonias. And this one's more in a part sun because of all of the things growing around it. You can even see how the containers growing around this old tree root that we kept. And you can see all of the pretty colors even from this way. There's that beautiful apricot color. Look how gorgeous. So weaving in here too, you see the tangerine slice appeal, and that's from this overly large container over next to that that we went into on part one. But we added those in there so that way they would climb up the king tuck grasses here, but I also knew that they would kind of make their way over into this space. So it just kind of sprinkles some little orange flowers throughout and looks super cute. And let's not forget my little chick charm containers. They're just now starting to really fill in. They're so cute and vibrant. I'm excited to see the colors that they turn as it gets a little cooler. And I am gonna save these. I think I might end up bringing them into the house. Got a little weed coming up in there. There we go. container gardening video and with all of the recipes I hope you are inspired or got some cool new ideas thank you so much and I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time <laughs>